Uh, we, as as Kunvi said, we, we initiated this discussion on the creation of a fund that the the tenth DII uh, summit um, in Berlin, which marked the the tenth anniversary of the establishment of DII, and that was uh, a very interesting event in in the Kempinski in uh, in in downtown Berlin. Um, but you know, we've all come a long way since. Uh, 2009 as an entire industry and uh, you know DI desert energy is you know quite rightly widely recognized um, as a pioneer in advocating and enabling renewable energy uh, projects both across you know uh, North Africa MENA, and even further afield so um, DI has been a, a constant and consistent partner in the industry um, and again rightly holds, uh, I suppose, uh, an unofficial title of being the network of networks in the industry. So you know, when I sat with, with Cornelius and Paul, we, we had the discussion, which was, you know, what more could we do? Um, how could we push forward the goals of DAI, truly enable um, uh, the DAI vision and the, 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 the very, very simple mission of no emissions? Um, you know that's been well, well, a well, a well thrown out phrase by 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 Paul in particular. So, how could we bring together the best of of DAI? And uh, Cornelius has gone on uh, and Paul about it, about that so far. Um, so, you know, how could we leverage the capabilities capabilities of DAI and its growing network of trusted associate partners, many of which are here? Um, to accelerate the transition, push the boundaries, uh, and enhance the power of technology and innovation uh, to increase efficiency, you know, better manage risks, create new opportunities for all of us, uh, and improve society, improve people's lives. Um, and in doing so, remain true to that DII vision. So finance, technology, and innovation are, are critical for the green energy transition. And uh, the role of green finance going forward is certainly crucial. Uh, but how could we leverage green finance um, or a green transition fund to, I suppose, really support the energy transition in a unique and innovative way? Uh, and so, you know, DI and its partners have led the way on many fronts, and this has been demonstrated over and over again. Uh, uh, and, and increasingly so in the area of uh, uh, green green molecules and hydrogen. Um, but there's a lot that can be done in terms of green finance. You know, globally finance um, for the sector is still a little bit behind the curve. There's still a lot of funding gaps that exist, uh, particularly on the development of supporting enabling infrastructure such as grid interconnection, storage, and the key areas that access bottlenecks and constraints. And so we initiated the, the concept of a, of a green transition fund. Uh, and so in developing a, a, a green transition fund, the great thing is we're not building, we're not building this up from scratch. Um, but we're actually starting from an incredibly strong foundation. Um, so such a, such a fund can play a, a very decisive role in promoting sustainable development opportunities uh, and powering the transition and can spur uh, investments in technology, in grid infrastructure, uh, interconnection, storage, but also in hydrogen and other green molecules. So a key thrust of our strategy is to develop finance solutions that deploys capital in innovative and meaningful and impactful ways uh, but also to look into the resource pool that exists within the DII network uh, and to generate sustainable long-term returns on uh, an investment portfolio. So I mentioned the strong foundation that we're building from and since starting the DII journey, um, DII has, has built such an incredibly strong base of, of capabilities from trusted networking to political advocacy. Uh, the deep technical and economic analysis that Cornelius um, referred to earlier. Um, and with the DLI transition fund, 
problems. Um, it's, it's important for us to uh, really leverage uh, those capabilities and build green finance into that capability stack and Bruce has been, been, been talking about that a little bit. So the investment philosophy is all built around green transition and neighboring projects, not necessarily markets, uh, local development, local partners, uh, and most importantly, relationships. And to enter projects early with a very clearly defined plan uh, and support network. Uh, but also to invest in unique opportunities. Uh, and in doing so, we believe we can use this network, use DII, um, to create proprietary deal flow. Uh, and also to do so uh, in a very unique proprietary risk management way, risk managed way. So you know, this would be a value added approach to DII, DII associate, associate partners. Uh, and indeed the green transition fund. So any portfolio can benefit from uh, that can benefit from a unique access to a, a broad group of, of, of global industry players uh, that can accelerate market growth, making us all more successful. Um, this in turn reduces the risk to any investments that uh, a green transition fund would make. Uh, and of course, maximize, maximize the returns for investors. So in, in developing a green transition fund for DII, it's very important to work very closely with DII associate partners and accessing the, the wide and diverse uh, pool of technical capabilities and expertise that exists uh, throughout the investment process. Uh, and particularly in risk management and sharing experiences, accessing supply chains from within the trusted partner network, uh, contracting, EPC, due diligence, uh, again, creating value for everybody involved in creating new opportunities. So the DAI Transition Fund platform will provide, again, sharing of knowledge, expertise, but also opportunities to bring peers together like we do uh, at, at events like this um, and discuss how we can catalyze change, but with the full stack of, uh, of capabilities, including the ability to, to finance and seed projects and new technologies. And hopefully we can do, and in doing so, we can create a pipeline of high, high quality uh, investments. So one of the things I think is very important just before we even, even, even sort of talk about um, uh, the, the actual uh, fund itself is, is just to talk a little bit about uh, this, this good old topic, ESG. And, uh, I just want to, to, to touch upon it just for, for a moment. You know, the DEI stated mission is you no know, emissions and you know, advancing emission-free technology projects and any related investment should always be related back to that mission. So it's extremely important to talk about the impact we have as investors in both society and the world. Uh, and from the very outset, we have a commitment to following uh, these, these principles for responsible investment. Um, and do so in a way where we can measure uh, measure the impact we have on the projects that we actually engage in, uh, and making sure we we take care of what matters to us um, as a, as a collective group. And so it's it's it, one one of the founding principles that we discussed very early on in the very early discussions with Paul was to incorporate absolute best practice when it comes to. Uh, ESG and absolutely everything that we do. And that includes a, a purposeful approach with the, intent, with the intent of addressing some of the negative, the negative social and economic impacts arising from traditional approach, approaches to investment decision making. Uh, making investment decisions with local communities in mind, uh, empowering people and having significant local contact, uh, content uh, in projects. But also it, it's, it's very important in, in, in this day and age was also to focus on the broader circular economy aspects of the projects to ensure both sustainability in, in the actual projects and sustainable uh, investing. Um, and to do so, I think it's also important that we, we actually clearly communicate all of this. 
and publicly report on the environmental metrics that we achieve um, through the fund. So one of the, one of the, one of the things just before I leave this topic, it's, it's, it's important that we, we also favour um, within, within this network with, with, with the trusted uh, associate partners that we, we favour collaboration over competition, uh, create long-term value for both the investors within the fund, um, the broader associate partners of DII, uh, and respect the needs of, you know, of everybody who's involved in, uh, in, in the, the source to sink pipeline. Um, that's, uh, that's, that ensures that you know, everybody's needs are met. So, um, in terms of, of, of the actual fund, we have two focus areas. So, one is green transition for technology, and the second is green transition for infrastructure. So, uh, let's deal with technology first. Um, that's usually where all the fun and sexy stuff is, and you know, we, all, we all like that sort of, that, that, that sort of thing. But um, along the way, and in the 10 years that I've been, been involved with, with DAI, um, and, and hearing an awful lot of the stories and introductions that, that Cornelius has made, um, we've met some remarkable companies uh, doing incredibly innovative things. Um, everything from new business models and fascinating new technologies across a broad, a broad spectrum. Um, and somewhere, you know, shoot for the moon type projects, um, which never saw the light of day, but you know, in theory were, were pretty excellent uh, and perhaps you know, could be even revisited um, with, the, with the technology today. But many, many of those companies have actually grown to become very successful. Uh, and indeed, I, I know for a fact that uh, several of those companies that, that start with small, small roots um, are here and are now you know, DLI associate partners. But you know the pace of, of technical innovation is greater than ever before, and developments are coming from, from new and different sources compared to the past. And there's a huge array of new partnerships, new entrepreneurs going, new competitors, and new opportunities um, arising all the time within, within the industry. Um, and this new green transition enabling energy technology, um, you know, fewer, you know, with, with, with fewer emissions, um, it's no longer, or zero emissions rather, it's no longer far-fetched or futuristic. Um, but it's not, developed, it's not dependent on any one big technological breakthrough, um, but it's more reliant on consistent innovation across the entire value chain from, from source to sink. So uh, in terms of, of looking at, 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 at the DAI fund and, and looking at two aspects of it, technology and infrastructure, um, I think from the technology perspective, we're, we're committed to identifying and investing in innovative technology and startups that have, that have high growth with game-changing technology. Um, to accelerate those companies to actually leverage the power of, of, of the DII network, uh, DII itself, uh, and all the other activities to actually accelerate those, those projects and commercialize them. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's people who see opportunities and uh, uh, DAI has been fantastic for bringing great people together, um, you know, and has always brought true disruptive ideas from the very first, uh, one of the very first uh, announcements to the public um, all those years ago. Um, and you know, it's driven by a desire to change and the way the world uses its resources. But um, it's not just deploying capital into, into new technology. Uh, it's also about how we can use and access the power of the DII partner network uh, to really assist these companies to apply their applications and bring them to scale um, in real life projects. And then to accelerate those, those those companies and accelerate those technologies, so we can actually really utilise it in making a green transition. Um, but in doing so, we should be able to have a measurable impact um, and ensure you know, robust environmental standards that we, as a collective group in DLI and its and its partners, can actually hold the projects and hold the fund. And, and, and everybody else associated with it to, to account. So, you know, leverage innovation and technology are a powerful mix and 
Um, you know, one of the interesting things just recently um, is that we're we're beginning to see very very interesting fintech solutions um, for green finance and in the energy sector and, and clean tech generally. Uh, and I think that's that's an area that we'll definitely be seeking to uh, to explore and to harness and to, to support future energy. And I think that's that's that, that's something we've, we've had some discussions on in the past few days. But you know, the potential of these investments and partnerships is immense, but it requires great people to unlock it. And uh, I can't emphasize how, how important the relationships are with, with DAI and the Associate Partner Network, um, because there is such a wealth of different thinking and experience just sitting in this room, and again, with the, with the folks who are watching us uh, online. So the second thing I just want to talk about is, is infrastructure and infrastructure investment. And, uh, you know, we can't just focus all our resources on discovering what we would hope would be a silver bullet solution and you know, magically assume that we can find it quickly um, and revolutionize the entire um, industry and have zero emissions you know, within five years and uh, uh, implement it at scale. But instead, I think we, you know, we must continue the path that we're on, which is to aggressively implement. certainly an awful lot of the partners and shareholders of, of DI. Um, and as an industry, it, it, it appears that we're still picking up the low-hanging fruit, uh, so to speak. And the integration of more in intermittent renewable resources is only just going to get harder uh, with a, a tremendous investment in storage, uh, transmission, greater interconnection. Uh, and that goes for, for, for green, uh, green electrons as well as, uh, as green molecules. Um, it's clear that you know, this situation calls for a sense of urgency and renewed investment in accelerating the pace of critical underlying support infrastructure to assist the rollout of, uh, of, of uh, technology. And so we feel that it's important to focus, uh, or the focus of the Green Transition Fund uh, should be to ensure that the capital is, I suppose, surgically directed uh, towards those places of need. Uh, which will act as, I suppose, uh, uh, grease to an engine uh, and loosen up the sticky gears of uh, deploying and, and, and bottlenecks in deploying a renewable, uh, renewable generation. Um, money isn't necessarily the problem. You know, there's vast amounts of capital available in the markets to, to be deployed. And I suppose in the, the post-COVID world, there will be uh, a lot of green stimulus packages coming. Uh, many of which uh, have been announced and are already on the on the horizon, um, and and the supply of capital definitely isn't the problem. The supply of projects is. Um, uh, within within my 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 company, we've done some analysis, uh, and uh, we'll 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 share a paper in in, in the next week or two, um, where we've we've done some of this. But you know, looking at at everything from a very high level perspective. 75% uh, of, of total capital deployed in uh, renewable energy is going, or clean tech is going towards technology development or operating projects. Um, and, and of course, that makes sense because uh, you know, capital is highly, or both VC capital and equity is, is highly relied upon to, to fund uh, technology development and commercialization, but nevertheless, the constraint. Uh, of capital um, is in the middle part of the spectrum, the part where um, anybody who, who here who's been involved in developing projects will know only too well. Um, it's that middle part of the spectrum that's, that, that stands out um, given the shortage of construction ready, ready projects. There's, there's this dramatic lean towards investing in clean tech, but a shocking uh, 
a shockingly small amount of, of, of capital is actually deployed to the project development phase. So as an, as an industry, we're still actually under investing in renewable energy projects. So how can we make a significant impact on, on this and accelerate the green transition and how can we measure it? So certainly we know that, that from a, a technology and infrastructure uh, perspective, new investments are needed. But if we look at project, if we look at the project development phase, um, it has an extremely high impact but capital available is very low. Um, but in many cases, the, the capital requirement is, uh, is actually quite small. But the investments themselves at, at, at those stages, those development stages, is a, a, a complicated investment. Um, and particularly if it's a less proven technology, so it might be less efficient or whatever. Um, so it's not necessarily as bankable as, as one would hope. And I suppose, you know, since the DII journey began, we've seen, we've seen everything, I suppose. We've seen um, constraints in, in panel supply. We've, we've seen others where demand for, 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 clean, for clean electrons and clean electricity was governed by the, the installation price and others when the, the prices plus subsidies left projects in the red and others still where there just wasn't sufficient capital or uh, the capital was in, in, insufficient or, or, or too expensive. Um, none of those things are necessarily big problems anymore, but uh, because, you know, offtake of demand for green electrons is good um, and it's increasing due to, due, due, due to price, global modular supply can support demand, usually. Um, human capital in the renewable energy sector continues to grow in quantity um, and indeed quality, and particularly here in, in this region. Uh, installation costs are coming down more or less in line with expectations and capital supply for uh, construction and operations is there in abundance. Um, and it's pretty cheap. And I think, you know, looking at, looking at what's, what's available and looking at the database that, that, uh, that DI have, you know, it's, it's ready for a hockey stick-like growth. Um, but, you know, there's, there's lots of projects that are, that, are, that are being starved because of the lack of development capital. So it seems like a, a reverse case of build it and they will come. And we've, we've been saying that for, you know, build it and they will come for, for building lots of uh, uh, cross-border interconnections and everything else for, for enabling solar from North Africa to Europe. And that's been a decade long problem. And uh, you know, with, with, with our friends in China talking about global energy interconnection and all these sorts of things, that's, that's possibly quite true, but when it comes to actually deployment, deployment of renewable generation, I think it's more of a case of uh, they will build it if the projects actually come. So we believe that the you know the DAI and the Green Transition Fund can be very a very useful tool, and working with the DAI partner network to assist in solving this problem uh, through new. Through new and different tools, and DI have a great history of providing excellent toolkits, um, the development of new risk management techniques, uh, and, 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 other, and other platforms, um, and other uh, new and innovative uh, investment models. So, for example, you know, pricing in uh, pricing in risk of less proven technology can you know, help bypass the, the chicken and egg problem of um, you, know, you need operating projects to get financing, you need financing to uh, get uh, operating projects. And so, you know, I think it's, 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 it's incumbent upon us to try and look for, for you know, shades of grey by, by doing a deal with some technology risks and marginally, marginally improved economics to try and uh, seed more projects and, 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 and move a lot more forward. Um, or look at, you know, alternative credit arrangements and, you know, smart, you know, making smart risk-adjusted uh, uh, investments with risk-adjusted risk adjusted returns. Um, and also to provide some lifeboat capital to good projects, which we know are good, um, which we have passed screening and due diligence uh, processes, uh, but are still under development, um, but you know, take an enhanced role uh, in risk mitigation and active procurement, uh, EPC management support, and again, utilizing the DAI partner network. So uh, 
In return to the concerns of the advisory board, uh, members, it was discussed recently that it's important that investment efforts are focused on, on transformative technologies uh, that, that, that underlie uh, infrastructure such as transmission and storage and uh, you know, cross-border international interconnection and lots of other essential supporting technologies and, and infrastructure. And, and they will certainly be the building blocks terms of all of this and a, and a, and a fund, you know. So what we've done is we've, we've come a long way in, 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 in the past year from initial discussions over, over, over some drinks after, after one, uh, one DI event. Uh, event. And um, what we have done so far is we have identified an initial portfolio of opportunities to deploy capital. Uh, both in in, uh, in new technologies, emerging technologies, but also in infrastructure projects, um, which we believe can enhance, uh, not only enhance the, the value of the projects, um, but they fit well into the overall objectives of DI and its, and its mission. Um, but moving on from that, we also want to start a dialogue with, with, with you guys, with the DI partner network. Uh, and any other potential partners and co-investors to get their feedback in order to, to tailor the offering of, of the fund. Um, and if there are other interesting, compelling model, business models that we haven't thought about, so we'd like to take that feedback in this private forum um, so that we can actually uh, include it within, within the, the, the actual fund structure. So, um, in terms of, of, of the practicalities of, of moving the fund forward, um, we're currently putting in place the necessary legal and uh, regulatory structures um, required to set up and operate the DII uh, fund, uh, and hopefully they'll be ready in the, in the, in the coming weeks and months. Um, we're in the process of appointing an advisory board, um, which I think is going to be very interesting and exciting uh, uh, to, to, to be part of that and to, to, um, to actually hear some of the ideas and, and feedback from that. Um, and to actually start the process of uh, bringing in and appointing investment, uh, investment professionals and uh, 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 the necessary analysts to, again, support the, uh, the development of the fund. Um, we envisage having offices, a uh, presence in both the UK, um, uh, and certainly here in uh, in in, uh, in possibly Dubai or somewhere else within within the region, but definitely a, a, a presence here uh, in the region. Um, and uh, finally, I think we we would hope to circulate a, uh, an investment prospectus um, later later on this year um, uh, to uh, 
to share with you some of our some of our deeper ideas and to to show some of our refined uh, uh, thoughts and uh, and models and how we can actually work and cooperate together. So um, just in, just in, in conclusion, I think today it would be really nice if we could uh, uh, have some discussions and have some feedback on on the idea. Um, you know. And it would be very useful to discuss you know, the pressing challenges and best practice and just generally share some ideas. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm really sure that you know, if, if the, today's COVID crisis is, uh, is a lesson of, of uh, resilience to us all when facing challenges in the, the green energy transition, you know, one of those things is we need to be prepared and to, to get ahead of issues. Um, to, uh, to, to advocate and, and, and envision and actually invest in, in, in building and enabling infrastructure and to, to cooperate um, as a partner network uh, in uh, both developing, or sorry, in, in, to cooperate as, 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 as a partner network to act decisively um, when it comes to embracing new technology, developing and deploying it to ensure that we can actually um, take responsibility and make a meaningful impact.